Hello and welcome to Grade 3 Math Dive in 5, Unit 14 on Points and Lines. My name is Daryl Frost. And I'm Barbara Knox. Thank you for joining us. In just a moment, you're going to pause the video and complete the task on the next slide. Use ang legs to solve the problem concretely. As you're working through the task, reflect on the three questions you see on the slide. Happy problem solving. See you back in a few minutes. So before we actually take a look at that problem that you just solved, let's look at the progressions with best considering um, third grade. In uh, first and second grade, you see that they are uh, given real world objects and identify parts of two and 3D figures with limitations on figures. In second grade, they are identifying and drawing 2D figures based on defining attributes, again, limited uh, uh, with this limited select uh, polygons. They begin categorizing in second grade and also in second grade identify uh, lines of symmetry for a two-dimensional figure. And that is new to second and third grade. Yes, it is. That it, symmetry used to be in fourth grade. And maps, it absolutely was. Right. Here, we are focusing on what you see both in GR11 and GR13, uh, describing and drawing points lines, line segments, rays, intersecting lines, perpendicular lines, and parallel lines, um, and identifying these in 2D figures, as well as lines of symmetry uh, in 2D figures, and identify line-symmetric two-dimensional figures, which simply means more than one line of symmetry. So, and yes, that is new from uh, maths to best, but we're going to focus on those ideas in both benchmarks. This unit, unit 14 and unit 15, which is on quadrilaterals, is very vocabulary, academic language heavy. So looking at the actions here, students are describing uh, attributes using academic vocabulary. They're drawing, identifying. The words you see there is, is what I would want front and center throughout this unit um, as students are exploring these ideas and making sense of them. Yes, and a lot of this vocabulary is going to be brand new to a third grader. They, they may have heard of symmetry before right. if their teacher touched on it last year, uh, but most of the rest of that vocabulary is going to be brand, brand new, new in third grade. So Barbara, let's take a look at this now. If uh, some teachers may have built a model of this, they may have used popsicle sticks that they saw from the um, best practices with this particular unit, or they may drew a representation of this with the, with the labeling the, the points on the line. Mm -hmm. But with the task here, you, they were to build the model and with ang legs and identify the following. So, and what's important here is like, when we think about a point, you identify a point. Uh, there are several points on this slide. There's A, B, C, D, and E, and they're all represented with that dot. Um, like something like that. like a the, period. Like right? a period. Or a decimal point. And it's important that students are able to notate the, notate the points with this kind of notation, right? That it is a point somewhere on a line or a line segment or on an angle. Correct. And then uh, can you name a line segment? Uh, I could see line segment AC that would start at A and end at C. When AD it, would be another one. Starting at A, ending at D. Correct. So a line segment is kind of like it's part of a line. And I know looking at the symbol that you have above the letters AD there, Daryl, that that is the symbol for line segment. It has a start and it has an end. It doesn't keep going in either direction. And is that important for that students? That is important. Yeah. What about a ray? Well, a ray, the symbol is going to have to have a start 
and no end. Something so, like that. Something like that. CE is a ray. Um, AD could also be a ray. If I put that ray symbol above, then I know it's starting at A, but it's continuing beyond D. So a ray has a fixed start, start point and then continues on forever and forever. ever. Yes. What about a line? Well, a line goes on forever, too. And In both ends, directions. Right? So, so that symbol would need to have arrows at both ends. Can you give an example of what the teacher might uh, have put? BD would be a good example. Okay. <clears throat> there you go. And then you see it. And, it, and it, again, it's important for students to use that this geometric notation and be able to translate that yes. to that's a line, and it's line BD. What about an angle? Well, angles we generally name with three letters. So if I look at CAD, I know that where the letter A is, my angle is going to be the turn from what where AC would turn to meet AD. So, so. Is it, it's kind of like the, the vertex. Would it be the vertex where yeah. that point A? Yes, the angle would be within that vertex. And it's again, it's important for students in third grade to use this geometric uh, notation when identifying these different ideas Correct. on any kind of a model. Correct. So we have actually we have three tasks within this math dive in five. This is the second. Uh, you're going to pause the video, complete the task on the next slide, use ang legs uh, to solve the problem concretely, and then reflect on the three questions you see on the slide. We'll see you back in a few minutes. So let's quickly recap. On task one, you were identifying lines, rays, points, line, line segments, segments, angles. angles. Mm -hmm. Now we're looking at different types of, you know, are lines intersecting? Are they parallel? Are they perpendicular? And task three is going to focus on something to do with symmetry, just kind of like so we know where we okay. are. So this here is focusing on perpendicular intersecting and parallel lines. You have this model. Many teachers, I'm sure, created them with ang legs or popsicle sticks. Mm -hmm. um, what questions could you ask as students are identifying the geometric concepts here? Uh, which lines do you see intersecting? And then how do you know? So like, give me a pair of intersecting lines. I know that CD and uh, EF intersect. And define, give me some reasoning as to how you know that because I see them cross over each other. So that's the key idea. Mm -hmm. If they're intersecting, they're somehow crossing each other. But where I see students having a misconception is that um, EF and GH are also intersecting lines, but yeah. they may not see those as intersecting because they don't intersect in that image. You would have to extend those lines to know that they're going to intersect. Ah, but I true. know that they're going to keep going forever and ever, so those will eventually meet and intersect. And that's important for them mm -hmm. to conceptualize a line, yes. as we talked about in task one, that goes on and ever and ever, and at some point they will. So even though they don't see it, they have to be able to reason through that. Right. Um, real world connections. What, what are some real world connections here? Uh, I think when you're building houses, maybe. Um, I'm going to make sure that I have perpendicular lines or where the boards meet might need to be perpendicular so that my house doesn't slant to the right or to the left. Intersections. Yes. Road intersections. So we talked about intersecting. Let's mm -hmm. talk about perpendicular lines. Do you, are any of these mm -hmm. lines perpendicular? Well, I know that um, E and F, EF line is perpendicular to both CD and to AB. And how do you know that? Uh, because they form right angles or square corners where they do intersect. And that's important in third grade because they're not going to be measuring to define a right angle and it measures 90 degrees, but they can define it and describe it as a square corner or a square angle. Correct. So that vocabulary would be important to use and have on our word walls, right? Yes. But I want you to take a look at this image, Daryl. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
What do you think will happen with that image? Well, I know that there are lines. You've got line ST and you have line um, UV. Yes. And since they're lines and they go on forever, they're eventually going to intersect. So they're going to be intersecting lines, even though you don't see them intersecting yet. They are intersecting lines. And, what else do you know? And they're also going to be perpendicular because they will they will form square corners or square angles. When they intersect. When they intersect. Exactly. What about um, uh, parallel? We, well, they're see, not parallel. Do you see any parallel lines at all? And I see CD and AB are parallel to one another because even if I extend those lines forever and ever and ever, they're never going to cross. They're never going to intersect, Daryl. And they're also always going to be the same distance apart. Correct. Because that's sometimes a misconception with parallel. Like if there the distance remains constant. Correct. So our third and final task, it, uh, you're going to pause the video, complete the task on the next slide, use ang legs to build uh, the the problem concretely, and as you're working through the task, reflect on the questions. So here, Barbara, our third task is we are focusing on symmetry. Line symmetry. Line symmetry, and there could be multiple lines of symmetry, right, on these shapes here. So let's take a look at that first shape. How would you identify it? Uh, it's a rectangle. Okay. And if I'm talking about symmetry, I'm either going to use like a mirror or folding, something where I can physically see that the two halves are identical and meet one another. And that I, I like what you said. They built them with ang legs. They could, a paper folding will be very important here because yes. many kids will think that the diagonals are also lines of symmetry on their rectangle potentially. Or they'll think that a parallelogram without right angles has a line of symmetry when in fact, when it, in fact it, it does doesn't. not. The so, paper folding would help address yes, that. Yes, it would. Or using a mirror would help with that too. Yes. So on that rectangle, how many lines of symmetry do we have? Uh, there would be one horizontal line of symmetry and one vertical line of symmetry. Let's take a look at that. There we go. Okay. okay. But the paper folding would be critical. Yes. What about this triangle here? Well, I don't think that that's an equilateral triangle. So in that case, it would only have one line of symmetry. It looks to me like it's an isosceles triangle. triangle. And where would that line of symmetry be? It would be from the top vertex to the middle of the bottom. Something like that? Line. Yes. Yeah. And again, paper folding would help? Yes. Even though you've built it with ang legs, paper folding would be a critical strategy here Correct. to use. What about this uh, trapezoid? Well, a trapezoid is going to be the same thing. It's uh, going to have one line of symmetry, and it's going to be a vertical line from midway on the top to midway on the bottom. Like that? Mm -hmm. And this octagon? That one's tricky, Daryl. I know I'm going to have lines of symmetry. So more than one? Yes, yes. I would think from the middle of the top to the middle of the bottom. Also from the middle of the left to the middle of the right. So kind of like the, the midpoints between like the... A vertex to vertex, Daryl. Vert okay, let's take a look and see what we have. Ooh, look at all those lines of symmetry. How many lines of symmetry are there? I believe that there are eight. So if there's eight lines of symmetry because... There are eight sides <clears throat> on that regular polygon, but it would have to be a regular polygon for that to be able to work. What do we mean by regular? All sides and all angles are congruent, so every side length is exactly the same length, and every angle has the same measurement, which we don't really learn about in third grade. Great. But There's yeah. eight lines of symmetry there, right. but again, folding would yes. be critical yes, and making it sure it is regular, even though we don't have to bring that yep. conversation in. Um, what real-world connections could we bring in with symmetry? <clears throat> uh, you see symmetry all over the world. I mean, think about a lot of house structures have symmetry. Um, 
most roads, that line in the middle of the road is almost a line of symmetry dividing that road in half. Many schools, the floors are squares. Yes. They have lines of symmetry there. Yes, they do. Could they, what, I mean, could they use letters also to think about symmetry? Sure, I could. I could think of letters that have lines of symmetry and others that don't. For example, uh, the letter A would have a line of symmetry, but the letter S wouldn't, even though so you kids could bring, might think it Kids does. could fold those. I mean, most right. schools, I would think, have die cuts with the letters. Mm -hmm. You could bring in some letters and have the kids fold and determine lines of symmetry. We also want to give them, though, those um, polygons and shapes that we know are confusing. And kids will visually think they have a line of symmetry, like the parallelogram without right angles that we were talking about earlier. The rectangle, those diagonals, thinking well, that, that's not a mirror image right, of each other, right. but they got to fold. To see to that see the that. two halves don't line up. There's three big uh, misconceptions here, or obstacles, and I'm highlighting the, that middle one there that talks about the idea, <clears throat> excuse me, that this, the, the vocabulary and everything is very abstract. And it we, is, and I mean, you want to think about two-dimensional shapes. A lot of times we'll put a piece of construction paper in a kid's hands, and really that's mm -hmm. not a two-dimensional figure because it does have depth. Right. Right. Uh, but we think of it as a two-dimensional figure. So they, what do we do? They have to be using ang legs. They need to be doing folding paper. They need to be working with letters to identify they symmetry. They need things physically in their hands, hands to manipulate in order to understand these concepts. And ang legs work well yes, and drawing do. representations of that. Because this unit and unit 15 are very vocabulary heavy, concept cards are a good strategy for, to help kids understand the various geometric ideas. Here, this is an example of shapes that have symmetry or that don't have any symmetry, but I could do it with um, lines. With parallel. Parallel, with intersecting. Any, any type of vocabulary I could do a concept card with. You could use them in your journals mm -hmm. and so forth. We also talked about popsicles, how you could take a popsicle stick and then just draw arrows to show that it's a line. line. Or you could do it as line segment or array. The CRA process is important in every math idea, but especially, especially here. Geometry. Otherwise, it's just very abstract. So we have to build, draw, and then really the verbalization of everything and explaining the reason is the abstract. Right. That concludes another grade three math dive in five on points and lines. We hope you find this helpful. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you back next time.